and that is with the Holy Spirit all through the audience now and the angels of the Lord present to minister in Christ's name. I was reading a scripture this afternoon while studying in the book of the Psalms, and I wish to read it just for a moment, a few verses of it, especially, I'll say two verses. That's the 32nd Psalm, the 7th and 8th verse. Thou art my hiding place. I love that. David speaking that God is his hiding place. How I love to think that we have a hiding place. That God's great presence can be our hiding place where we can hide from the things of the world. And when trouble arrives, he's our hiding place. And in the eighth verse, he said, And I will guide thee with mine eye. I was thinking, God speaking there, how he would guide us with his eye. And to know that his presence is ever near, and he does guide us. And I was thinking how becoming that scripture is to the true servant of Christ. In St. John 5, 19, when he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing That doeth the Son likewise. The great eye of Jehovah, Jesus was looking through his eyes. It must have been Jehovah's eyes that he was looking through when Simon came up and he told him that his name was Simon and he was going to change it to Cephas and told him his father's name was Jonah. It just had to be God's eye that he was looking through. God's eye has been with the prophets through the ages that could see ahead of time what was going to happen. It could be nothing else but God's eye. When Nathaniel was brought by Philip into his presence, and Jesus said to him, Behold an Israelite. And he said, When did you know me, Rabbi? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. It must have been God's eye that he was looking through. It must have been God's eye in St. John 4 when he seen the woman have five husbands. It was God's eye that he was looking through when he, the woman touched his garment and virtue had gone from him and he looked over his audience until he found the woman and knew what her trouble was. It could have been nothing else but looking through God's eye when he perceived the thoughts of the Pharisees when they said, you are Beelzebub in their hearts. It was God's eye that he was looking through when he perceived the thoughts of the disciples when they said, reasoning, who would be the greatest among them? It was God's eye that he was looking through when he went down into the pool of Bethesda and looked around to find a man on a pallet and knew that he had been in that condition for 38 years. And what a consolation it is in our scripture reading last night that we found that Jesus said the scriptures cannot be broken. And then when Jesus went away and that great eye of God that was to guide, he promised the things that I do, the works that I do, shall you also And that guiding eye wasn't to be gone at the going of the Lord Jesus. He was to continue forever in his church. 
And when he rose on the third day and ascended up on high and sent the Holy Spirit back, that the church tonight looks through that same guiding eye that guides his people to all truth. And he is truth. And how happy we are tonight to know that that scriptures cannot be broken and know that that same eye that will guide us is in our presence tonight. Or we are in its presence tonight that shall guide us from sickness unto health. That shall guide us from our afflictions to the cross. That will guide us from of affliction to good health that will guide us from a sinful life to a sainted, set-aside life in God. That presence of God is ever near. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end. And we're nearing the end. And as Jesus confirmed That guiding eye being with him in the days when he revealed himself to the Jews before the ending of that church age for the Jews or their dispensation, he manifested it by looking through the eye of God. He did the same thing to the Samaritans. And now we got the Gentiles left. And tonight, God still looks through that same eye because... Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he still looks through the eye of God as he can, with his grace and sanctifying power, cleanse us and has called us to be his sons and daughters to use us as the vines or the branches in the vines to still look through the eye of God to see what has been and what will be And we will not walk in darkness as long as we look through God's eye. God's eye reflects his will, reflects his his spirit, reflects his word. What good would it do with all of our training? What good would it do with all of our teaching and our theology if there wasn't something to keep us even keeled? What good would it do a ship to have great sails and great fine bows and sterns and pockets in it, a great compass on the inside if it didn't have a rudder. What if it had neither compass nor rudder? It would just be drove about with the winds from place to place. But we're thankful that God has both rudder and compass. He lets us know where we're standing today and what will be. He said, I will never leave thee, I will never forsake thee. So let us look to the eye of God tonight, and we will see that he'll lead us to Calvary. And at Calvary, everything was finished. He was wounded for our transgressions with his stripes, we were healed. Every sinner here tonight was was saved when Jesus Christ died at Calvary. Every sick person was healed healed when Jesus died at Calvary. He finished the work. The only thing that God can do now is to anoint ministers to preach the word or set gifts in the church to to point you to the finished work of our Lord Jesus. May God grant it tonight is my prayer while we pray. Eternal and blessed God, who brought again the Lord Jesus from the dead and raised him up and set him at the right hand of the majesty on high, there making intercessions upon our confession. And we come tonight with a confession to say that we believe every word that he taught us in his word. And to confess is to say the same thing. And we believe that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That in his presence this year, and will declare him alive after 1900 years. At the closing of this age, your Gentile dispensation. Come, Lord God. One 
word from you will mean more than all the words that we all could say. Just to see you speak with your great power, it would send the hearts into a place that they have perhaps never reached before. And it would bring faith to a level for the healing of the sick and conviction to the sinner that would repent of his or her sins. And we pray then, Lord, tonight that our bodies may be yielded to thee in such a perfect way that you would speak to us. Grant, Lord, these blessings, realizing that our voice going through this microphone declares that there is something alive because the microphone would be a mute if there wasn't something to make a noise behind. And so would we be, O oh God, but speak, Lord Jesus, as we yield ourselves to thee for service. And in humility we'll bow our heads and give thee praise while we call for thy presence. We have a right to do it because you promised you would do it. And you do it on those bases, not because you have to, but because you promised it. And the scriptures cannot be broken. They must be fulfilled. Therefore, Lord, we wait humbly as servants of yours on the manifestation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For we ask it in his name. Amen. Now it depends now upon God. And if he will bless us by his presence, we shall go away with happy hearts like those who came from Emmaus if he will reveal himself to us. The minister has spoke, the songs has been sung, and the prayer has been made. The scripture has been preached. Now it's God's time to speak. And God can't speak through or in this manner just and perform things unless somebody will be here to hear it. Many mighty works he could not do because of their unbelief. So tonight may our conscience and our emotions be moved if he shall so bless us to come in in our building here tonight and make himself known that he is the lovely resurrected Jesus. Now we shall call the prayer line, not too many, but just a few to get them to the platform. I believe they said the prayer cards were, prayer card P was giving out tonight like in Paul. Last night we took a group of them, so tonight I believe we're from 50 on to something, 75 or something last night. So let's start and just get a few men time fading, pleading fast from us. Let's begin and start with the 85 and go to 100 just to get someone up here. And who holds prayer card P85? Would you just raise your hand so that we could see you're here? Maybe I got the wrong place. I will... What's it? P85. Oh, the lady here. All right, lady. Come right down here. 86. Would you raise your hand? Prayer card P86. The lady. Everyone's got prayer cards. Look, and those who can't uh, uh, get up or something or can't move your hands or if you're... Look at your neighbor's card. They may be deaf and dumb. 85, 86, 87. Prayer card... 87, way up in the balcony. They're just give out all over the building. The boys give them out. 87, 88. Oh, in the... All right. 
8889. Prayer card P89. The lady there. Thank you, lady, for helping her. She may be dead. 8990. Would you raise your hand or can I see it, someone? Prayer card P90. The lady. All right. 91. Prayer card P91. 92. 93, 94, 94, all right, 95, 95, prayer card T, 95, would you raise your hand in the line, 96, See, it may be someone not coming up here doesn't mean you're going to be healed. Not by no means. You can be healed in your seat just the same as you can be healed here. 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Now, if we can get these out in time, we'll start back somewhere else and just keep bringing them up. But now coming up here doesn't mean that you're going to be healed. You can be healed out there just the same as you can be healed here. God will heal you on the merits of your faith and that alone. Just as you believe. Now, how many out there does not have a prayer card? And you want God to heal you. You won't be called up the platform, but you want God to heal you. Just raise your hand. Anywhere in the building. That's the reason we have to give out cards just to get them lined up. All right? You do this. You just look to Christ. The Bible said that he is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. How many know that? The Bible teaches that. Well, a woman touched his garment, and he said, I got weak. And she went off into the audience somewhere, and Jesus said that he was weak, that virtue had gone from him. Then he, he looked around until he found the woman. How many ever read that story? Well, then, does the Bible say in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? The scripture says he's still a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Then you look tonight, not to a preacher, not to one of your brothers or sisters, but look to Calvary. Look to Christ, who is not exactly Calvary. Calvary's where the price was paid, but Christ is away from Calvary tonight. He's in the presence of God ever living to make intercessions upon our confession, the Spirit of Christ is here in our midst tonight. And notice, while they're lining the people up, when Christ was here on earth, he said, I came from God, and I go to God. Do you know that to be true? How many believe that Christ was in the wilderness with the children of Israel, that pillar of fire that led the children of Israel was Christ. Do you believe that? The angel of the covenant was in the burning bush. He said he was. Before Abraham was, I am. And I am was the one that spoke to Moses in the bush. Then God was manifested in flesh to take away sin, which was in his son's body, Christ, because God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He expressed himself through Christ. And Christ said, I come from God, from the pillar of fire, and I return back in that condition. After his death, burial, and resurrection, Paul met him on the road to Damascus, and he was again back into light. How many knows that's true? Well, any spirit will bear record of itself. Any life will bear record. A life of a, as I have said before, a life of a pumpkin vine will bear life, bear pumpkins. Grapes will bear grapes. 
Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. The life that's in you, if I told you the spirit of an outlaw was in me, you'd expect me to have big guns and be dangerous. If I told you the spirit of an artist was in me, I would be able to paint the pictures that the artist painted. And if we say the spirit of Christ is in us, we do the things that Christ did. I think the picture here, not of me, I have nothing to do with it at all. It's Christ expressing himself to his people. Then if this, this being photographed here in Germany and different places and before the great man, even FBI examined the picture, George J. Lacey. And if it was proven to be a supernatural being and it looks like the same pillar of fire, then it was Christ still with his church. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Then the works that I do shall you also. It'll do the same kind of works he did if it's the Spirit of Christ. If it isn't the Spirit of Christ, it won't do those works. Upon this, let us say, are you the lady that's to be prayed for? I want to know how many in the building that would raise your hands that I do not know you. Let's see your hands. Everybody in the building. In the prayer line, too. That I do not know you. Here's a picture of the Bible. Now, remember, the Bible was written by the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit that wrote the Bible still lives. He doesn't get any different. He doesn't know any more today than he knows then because he was infant to begin with. And if God did anything in the beginning... And if the same circumstances rises again, and if he acts different than what he did in the beginning, he acted wrong when he acted. He's got to remain the same. He doesn't get smarter like we do because he was, he was infant to begin with. And the Bible is a, both a history, it is a prophet, it's a love story, and portrays Christ to us, then if the Christ of the Bible is not dead but alive, he's got to manifest himself just like he did in the Bible. Now, here's a woman. The dear beloved person is, i never seen her. She looks about the age of my mother. I've never seen her in my life. And we are totally strange to each other. And here is a picture of of the a Bible scene, like it was in St. John, the fourth chapter, when a man and woman, Jesus at the well with the woman, and he spoke to her. I noticed he was on his road to Jericho, but need go by Samaria. Why? He just said in St. John 5, I do nothing till the Father shows me first. Do you believe that scripture? Then he never performed one miracle without God showing him first. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. And my dear beloved sister, if there was one thing that I could do to help you to get well or, or whatever your trouble is, you might not even be sick. I don't know. I've never met you. If there was anything I could do to help you, if it's finances, I might let you have very little money because I haven't got but a little. If it was domestic trouble, I would try to talk to your loved one. I, I'd do anything that I could. But now as healing, if it's healing, it's already done. If you're seeking healing from Christ, it wouldn't lay within me to do that or no one else. It would lay within God. And God has already did it according to his word. Then the only thing that we can do as ministers, some of the men who's sufficient to do it, explain it through the scripture. That's the initial way. That would settle if it would be me or be you. But God's so good. He moves every little stone so that everybody, he loves people. And he's trying to do something else to bring them to, to believe him and have faith in him. Now, if the Lord God would reveal to me what you're standing here for, 
just like he did at the well at the Samaritan woman. He found her trouble, and as soon as he told her where her trouble was, she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know that when the Messiah cometh, he will do these things, show these things to us. And he sh she believed him to be a prophet, but Jesus said, I'm he that speaks with you. And she ran into the city and said, Come see a man that told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? If that was the sign of the Messiah then, it's the sign of the Messiah now, if he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. He did the same thing when he declared it to the Jewish race of people. By bringing Philip, went and found Nathaniel 30 miles around the mountain and brought him back. And Jesus told him that he knew where he was at, what he had did. What the Pharisees think of that? They said it was the devil. And Jesus said, I forgive you, but when the Holy Ghost has come to do the same thing, a word against it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Now you see where we stand. Right now, the gospel has got to be proven right or wrong. If Christ made a promise like that, he's obligated to his word. And what a consolation it is to know that the religion that we serve, God, is the only religion in the whole world that can prove that their God is alive. I've had the privilege to stand before 20 and 30 different religious people, different religious people that believe in different gods, Mohammeds and Buddha and Sikh and Jan and all, all different kinds and blanket natives and with idols in their hands. But never is there anyone. Man's made big statements, but there's only one man who said, I have power to lay down my life and take it up again. Amen. And he did it. Amen. And 1,900 years, blessed be his name, he still lives. Amen. He isn't dead. Amen. As you see, not in some dark corner off somewhere, here under the lights, me and this woman meeting the first time, I claim that Christ is alive tonight. And if you can only yield yourself to the Spirit, let Him speak through you. Now, it has to be supernatural. It depends on what you think it is. If you take sides with the Pharisees, then you get their reward. They said it was the devil, fortune teller or something, Beelzebub, prince of the devils, which anybody knows that any dark magics and fortune telling is of the devil, certainly it's something that the devil perverted. The true Spirit of God comes from Christ and that alone. The Lord help us, our sister. May he grant. And if he will tell you, now if I just lay hands on you and say, go, you're healed, you'd have a right to doubt that. But if he tells you something that's been in your life that you know whether it's something that you've done down along your life, like Nathaniel, or something like the woman that she had five husbands, you'll know whether that's true or not. Then you be the judge. You be honest with God, will you? I'll be honest with God. Will you people be honest with God and say, if he will do that, it'll take every suspicion away from me. I'll believe that he raised from the dead. Will you promise him that with your hands up? God bless you. May he grant it is my prayer. The lady is suffering with arthritis. That's what she wants prayer for. That's exactly the truth. That's right, you raise your hand. Do you believe now? Now, just talk to her a little more. You said you could have guessed that, Brother Brandon. So you can't hide your thoughts now. You catch them. The Lord reveals them. Listen to me, people of Chattanooga. The angel of light that's pictured here is not two foot from where I'm standing right now. That's thus saith the Lord. 
and find out at the day of the judgment where it'll be proven if you can't believe his presence bearing fruit of what he was back under before his crucifixion. Then at the day of the judgment, you'll see. Yeah, I see the lady trying to move off of something. It's a chair. She tries to get up and she sits back down. She gets up again. She's in a room. It's a little chair like with an arm on it, like a rocker. She's trying to move out of that place. She's going towards your window. She's holding her back. It's arthritis of the spine. It's in her back. That's exactly right. You're wanting prayer for someone else, too. That's your daughter. You believe God can reveal to me what's wrong with your daughter? She's having migraine headaches. That's thus saith the Lord. There's something still pondering in your heart. It's a prayer for someone else, too. That's your son. And he's a dark shadow over him. You're praying for the salvation of his soul. He's a sinner. That's thus saith the Lord. That is true. Do you believe? If you will believe, you know something speaking. That isn't me, lady. You heard my voice. And now that feeling that was on you just a few moments ago has lifted, hasn't it? Between you and I stood the light. That angel, it's gone from you now. I believe you receive everything you ask for. You go believing, and you shall have what you ask for. God bless you. Brother Bill, would you come here and take... Where's Billy or somebody here? To... How do you do, lady? Now, just before the lady, how many of you really believe right now with all your heart? Now, you out there that doesn't have a prayer card, up here in the balconies, wherever you are, just look. Say, Lord Jesus, if this be truth, let the man speak to me out here. Let him, you, you're the same. I, I know it ain't the man, because he don't know me. I'm just sitting here in the audience. But he told us a while ago that you was a high priest that could be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. And you let him speak to me. And then it'll take every suspicion away from me, and I'll believe you, Lord God, that you, that you want to heal me and make me well. You do that and find out what takes place. You're setting out the audience, of course. I say that because of people on that thought of something that runs through their minds, wondering. Don't wonder, just have faith. He said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. All things. Isn't that wonderful? All things are possible. We're strangers to each other too, I suppose, my sister. You look to me like an honest woman. You are a Christian because your spirit is welcome. You are aware, lady, that in the presence of your brother wouldn't make you feel that way. Now, you be honest with me and with the audience. Just now, something began to take place. What was it? This picture that you see here of that angel, that's what come on you just now. Now, to me, you just look real light. But I see you moving from me, and you're praying also for an, an arthritis. And you're praying for your husband, and he has the same thing. That's exactly right. There's something still in your prayer list that you're praying for and have been for a long time. I see you kneeling. You're offering prayer, and I see two men 
bride. And they're both shattered as sinners. It's your brothers. And you're praying for their salvation. That's thus saith the Lord. Can you believe now that his presence is here? Then God bless you. You go, my sister. And God deliver you from everything that you have need of being delivered. God bless you, I pray. Be real reverend, please, if you will. Unbelief is one of the most horrible things there is. Let me go anyway, but don't let me be a religious unbeliever. Unbelief is the only sin that there is. Smoking, drinking, committing adultery, cursing, swearing, that's not sin. That's the attributes of unbelief. He that believeth not is condemned already. And people who claim to be religious go to church, pious, and still rank unbelievers, sinners. Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil. And yet they were just as pious and religious as they could be. The worst demon is to deal with is a religious demon. They're five times more harbor than any other evil spirit. The Lord bless you, sister, which you are my sister. You could be a critic. You could be sent in there to, to do something wrong. How would I know you were my sister? The same way that he knew that Nathaniel was a just man with no guile. You're not standing there for yourself. You're staying there for someone else. It's your sister. She's in a hospital. You got that little thing there in your hand? Woman's got cancer. And the relative that you're praying for is your aunt, the sister in the Lord. I know it stumped you when I said, Sister, not reading your mind. But that's the reason I know unbelievers set in the midst. Now go believing. Don't doubt. She'll get well. If you won't doubt it, God bless you. Now. Don't doubt a thing. Go believing with all your heart. How do you do? Sir, I suppose we're, we're strangers. Our first time meeting. Don't know you, never seen you, but God does know you. Do you believe with all your heart out in the audience? Have faith. lady sitting there, kind of aged, shaking her head, second one in the row there, back there. Do you believe God to heal you that scientist trouble, make you well? Well, he healed you then. You touched something, you know, it was the Lord Jesus. Why'd you put your handkerchief up to your face for a young lady? Do you believe me to be God's servant? You have a little yellowish looking dress on. You believe God hears and answers prayer? You put your handkerchief up too, didn't you, lady? Mm -hmm. Aren't you praying for your daddy? You believe he'll heal him of that cancer? All right. Lady, you there, sitting next to her wiping your eyes and so forth. You're praying for your husband. He's unsaved. That's thus saith the Lord. You have faith and believe. God will grant it to you. 
You've got bright eyes, sir, but that don't mean that they're all together well. You want me to pray for your eyes. That's right. Not only that, you want me to pray for someone else. That's your wife. She's got heart trouble. You're scared of cancer, too, aren't you? Don't worry. <laughs> You're not from this city. You're a nice person. You're from a city called Knoxville. You're a minister, too. That's right. Your last name's Klein. Your first name's David, Reverend David Klein. If you believe with all your heart, go receive what you've asked. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. <clears throat> Heavy set, lady. Back over here to my right, sitting down here. Sitting there praying just as hard as you can. You are also praying that God would touch you. You believe God would heal you at that kidney trouble, make you well? I want to tell you another thing you had, too. You have some sort of a cough that you cough with. It's asthma. If you believe with all your heart, rise up, be made well. Do you believe? I've never seen you, but God knows you. You're in trouble. You're suffering with gallstones. That's right. And you're in distress over someone else. That's a man, a brother. Cancer. Been operated on several times, to be exact, four times. No success. Will you believe with all your heart? If you will, you may go off the platform and receive what you've asked for. In Christ's name. <laughs> Only believe. Yes, you sitting right there, little lady there with a little brown looking hat on. You believe God will heal you through that stomach trouble and arthritis to make you well? Well, you've received it. God bless you. Is this the lady? Let's get a bunch of unbelief here a few minutes ago. It's got me all. We are strangers to each other, lady. You know, Jesus said, let them both grow together, both wheat and terriers. Are you convinced that Jesus lives tonight? Are you convinced that he is raised from the dead? The lady is a stranger to me. I do not know you, do it, sister. We're perfectly strangers. So are those out in there. It ain't the woman, it's the child keeps it coming. Out the end of the line there. Believe God heal the little one. Give back his hearing. Make him well. Take the death spirit off of him. Will you give God praise? Take him back to his home. God bless you. Get over there and speak in his ear. Watch what happens. 
You believe with all your heart? I'm a stranger to you. But you're suffering with a nervous condition. And what's caused that is a bladder. It makes you irritated. That's right. That is true, isn't it? Are you believing? I see more you'd speak to this lady. It just You can imagine what it does to you. I'm just about to drop. What's it happening? How was it that I could stand here more than he did himself when one person... What is it? God never used his gift. The woman used it. She drawed from God. She drawed through Jesus, her faith. She touched him. He said, I, he didn't know what happened. That's you using it. No wonder people get suspicious and say, well, I don't understand. It might be, it might be this, that, or the other. Is this. It's because you only see right here at the platform. This is all you see. You're not out there with us in the meetings at home. My wife's sitting right there. Here's boys. Here's ministers sitting right here. That's with me constantly. Think about the things it tells for weeks and months and years ahead of time. Did you ever see it fail, boys? Perfectly out there. How many knows those things to be true? Not even right in here, but out places, people who know me. This is just you. You're using God's gift now. I'm not his gift. It's the angel of the Lord. He has to use somebody's voice to speak it. Has this, the Lord has told her, all right. Was it right what he said? Was it right what it said? Now, you know, lady, I wouldn't know it. The only way I'll ever know now is to get it on the tape. But let's just talk it. Yes, there she is. It's a bladder condition. No, that's your... You're praying about a, a son. It was a brain injury that happened. That's right. Not only that, but you got a brother you're praying for. And that's cancer. Are you convinced that God's the healer? Then go in God's peace, be with you, and bless you. Give you that which you've asked for. All right. Are you believing? All your heart? A real reverend out in the audience there. Just believe. Have faith. You believe your back trouble left you stand there? You do? Or you can go on your own. Just say thank you. You believe your female trouble has left you the lady's trouble? You do? Or you can go on your own and rejoice and say thank you, Lord God. All right. Lady, don't know whether you're aware of this or not, but you're shattered with a cancer. You, you knew it. All right. Do you believe that God healed you? Go. Never be bothered with it again. Come, lady. You've been nervous for a long time. That started when you was a woman about 40, when it was the change of life come on you, which is called the menopause. Through that, you've had much trouble. And the trouble now has settled to a spastic condition of the stomach in here, which makes you have a stomach trouble. It's a peptic ulcer in your stomach. That is right. Why would God know 35 years ago what happened to you? You know I didn't know that, did I, lady? All right. Go eat now. Believe. You shall be able to. You have a real strange feeling when I said stomach trouble, didn't you? Yeah, well, you see at the same time. So you just believe with all your heart. All right, everyone. Leave that asthmatic condition will leave you. You believe it, he'll make you well. All right, then go on your road and say thank you, Lord Jesus. And bless with all it. What if I didn't say a word to you, just told you you were healed? Would you take my word for it? Go see you. God bless you. Just go on your oh. Hallelujah. You wouldn't have to take insulin if you go to Calvary. He heals diabetes. You believe that? Go on your road and rejoice. And say, thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes? 
You've got a cyst for one thing. Next is an abscess. It's in your female glands. You believe God will make you well? Go on your road and rejoice. Do you believe with all your hearts? The scripture says, These signs shall follow them that believe. How many is believers? Now, will you do something? Lay your hands over on someone there by you. Someone around you there. These, you all lay your hands on each other. Now, if you're a Methodist, pray the way you do in a Methodist church. If you're Pentecost, pray the way you do in a Pentecostal church. If you're Baptist, pray the way you do in a Baptist. Whatever church you belong to, pray for the person you got your hands on. These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now, let's bow our heads. Eternal and blessed God, we are praying one for the other, confessing our faults one to another, and we're confessing our faith in the resurrection of Christ, your Son, who is omnipresent, who is here now to make well the sick, to save the sinner. O eternal God, let the unbeliever see his mistake now, and may the Holy Ghost come in great power and conviction and send mercy to them and bring them to a saving knowledge of Christ. O Satan, you who have bound the sick, come out of the people. You are defeated because you're exposed. Christ is raised from the dead and is alive tonight and forevermore. Just declare unto you that you have no legal rights. Christ stripped you of everything you had at Calvary in his great vicarious suffering and his death and his triumph resurrection. His appearing here tonight has brought us the assurance that he's living and he's anointed us and his presence is here now and Satan, you can't hold him any longer. Come out of him in the name of Jesus Christ.